Turn your Bibles, if you will. We're going to be in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. And as you're turning there, why do blondes have TGIF written on all their shoes? TGIF. Simply to remind them, toes go in first. What do you call a fly buzzing inside of a blonde's head? That would be a space invader. Right, Brandy? I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. This morning, I want to talk about which road are you on? Which road are you on? The Gospel of Matthew records five long discourses or sermons given by Jesus himself. And the first, which is probably the most well-known, is called the Sermon on the Mount. And that discourse or that sermon begins all the way in, in Matthew chapter 5 and goes all the way through chapter 7. It covers three chapters in the Bible. Now, an interesting note about these five sermons or these five discourses is that they all end with the same phrase. The phrase says, and the people were astonished by his teaching. Every single one of those long discourses, every single one of those sermons ends with that phrase, and the people were astonished by his teaching. That truly separates Jesus from all others. Amen? And in his Sermon on the Mount, this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus exalts and he magnifies the law. This is what Isaiah prophesied about Christ, about the coming Messiah. He said in Isaiah 42, 21, he said, The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He, Jesus, will exalt the law and he will make it honorable. So as we know, Jesus is the completion of the law. He is the fulfillment of the law. He came and he was perfect. He was sinless. He was the fulfillment of the law. But before he would go to Calvary, in his earthly ministry, he exalted the law. And we see that magnified here in his Sermon on the Mount. What does that mean by he exalted the law? Well, plain and simple is that he made... He made the law simple. He made it clear. And he made it clear that we are all guilty sinners. Amen? We are all guilty sinners before a holy and righteous God. We need to understand that. Too many in this world view themselves as good people. Now, this sermon teaches us very clearly that there are no good people. Amen? There are no good people because we have to compare ourselves to that standard of righteousness. And who is the standard? God himself. Amen? God himself. Sure. Right? We may be a, a better sinner than the murderer. We may be a better sinner than that thief. We may be a better sinner than the abuser. But we are still sinners condemned before holy and righteous God. Amen? Now, we fall into the snare of trying to justify ourselves by comparing ourselves to others. And again, that's just comparing one sinner to another sinner. We may be better sinner than the next guy, but we are still sinners in the eyes of holy God. Bottom line is that we may not be as bad as we can be, but we are as bad off as we can be. And that is sinners, condemned before holy God. So we have to compare ourselves to the standard of righteousness, and that is God himself. We have to understand that. So when Jesus exalted the law, when he magnified the law, he broke it down into its simplest form. He said things like, if, if we lust after another, if a man lusts after a woman, Jesus said, then he has committed adultery where? Already in his heart. 
He said, if one hates another, if we hate someone, then we have committed murder where? In our heart. See, that's what it means by he exalted the law. He broke it down into its simplest forms. Bottom line is sin is a heart condition. Our sinful heart puts us all on the wrong road. We are sinners by birth and by choice. Plain and simply. Now, I want to pick up at the end of this sermon in Matthew chapter 7... Skip down to verse, uh, let's go down to verse 13. We'll pick up right at verse 13. Matthew 7, verse 13. Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few Who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was written when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So let me start by laying the foundation to this message. And I want to focus on two verses. I want us to focus on verses 13 and 14. Amen? Here in in these two verses, Jesus says in verse 13, Enter by the narrow gate. This is his command for us. He's telling us, enter by the narrow gate. Why? He says, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Here Jesus is illustrating to us, That there are only two ways, two roads in life. He said the first one is the broad way, the the broad road. This road has a very wide gate to enter through. This road is very accommodating, very accepting. Then Jesus said the other road is a very difficult way. It's a difficult road. This road has a very narrow gate to enter through. This road is very restrictive. Now, in today's society, every religion and every lifestyle, no matter how immoral, is accepted and accommodated. That is, with one exception. What is that exception? Christianity. 
oddly enough. Amen? It's taboo to say Merry Christmas these days, isn't it? Someone might get offended. All the stores that you go shopping around at Christmas time, you'll never hear Merry Christmas anymore because somebody might get offended here in this Christian nation. Sad to say. Our children can no longer stand up, put their heart or their hand over their heart, and salute the flag with one nation under God. That's been eliminated from our classrooms. When someone sneezes, you don't hear God bless you anymore, do you? You just hear bless you. And God forbid that we say the name of Jesus anywhere. But this is also why so many people are lost, so many are undone without Jesus Christ, and so many are dying and going to hell. They don't want to take the responsibility. They don't want to acknowledge the fact that God has made only one way of salvation. Plain and simple. No, it's not tolerant of other ideas. Yes, it's very restrictive and very narrow. But Jesus made it very clear. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one comes unto the Father except through me. Amen? Absolutely that's not tolerant of other ways, is it? It's very restrictive. It's very narrow. But this truth makes Satan and this world extremely angry. We'll hear somebody say, well, you mean to tell me that anyone who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ will die and go to hell? Well, unfortunately, that is exactly what Almighty Creator God has told us. It's not my opinion. It's not my thought. It's what I believe in, yes, 100%. Why? Because God said so. Plain and simple, God said so. Now, I want you to think about it for just a minute. If there were any other way, God would not have had to send his only begotten son. Amen? Think about it. His perfect, his holy, his righteous son, he sent to become sin for us. To go through and endure what he did on Calvary. If there were any other way, God would not have done that. That's just common sense. While Christ was nailed to that cross, what did the crowd shout to him? They said, you saved others, now save yourself. And Jesus absolutely could have done that. He could have summoned 10,000 angels with a blink of an eye and wipe out all of mankind. He could have done that in the blink of an eye. But he didn't. Right? Jesus knew there was no other way. Jesus knew that our redemption, our salvation was very narrow, very restrictive. It wasn't accommodating of other ways. He knew why he had come. He had come to sacrifice his own life in exchange for ours. He is our only hope for salvation and redemption. So the fact is that Jesus is the one and only way. And people get more upset that the Bible is not accommodating of other ways than they do about the fact that they are lost, they are unsaved, and at enmity with holy God. That's the sad truth. They're more angry at the fact that the Bible's not accommodating than they are at the truth that they are at en enmity with holy God. You know, it's not like that in really any other area of our life. Now, say I were to 
talked to a veteran mountain climber, mountain climber who's climbed mountains for 30 years, professional. And I talked to him about climbing Mount Everest. And if I were to say to him, you know, there's hundreds of different ways that you can get to the top of that mountain. You know what he would tell me? <laughs> he would quickly reply and say, no, there is only one way to get to the top of that mountain, only one. And I'd respond, ah, that's just too narrow-minded. And I could then walk away with the, with the peace of mind that I was not being restrictive, right? I was indeed accommodating. Yes, I might have been re accommodating, but I was dead wrong, amen? We can be accommodating all we want and still be dead wrong. And that's the attitude that many have toward the Bible, the Bible truth, that salvation is only through Jesus Christ. Now, talked about common sense. Let's put, a, put aside our faith for, for a moment, right? And just look at this through the eyes of common sense. When we choose to get married, what are we saying? I want you to think about this. We are saying that this is the one and only person that I want to marry. What else are we saying by that statement? We are saying that no, we're telling every other person on the face of this earth, what are we telling them? No, right? We're saying yes to that one person we want to marry and no to every other person in the earth. When we choose a college or a university or a trade school, right? What are we saying? We're saying this is the one and only school that we are choosing to go. And we're saying no to every other school, aren't we? And it's the same when we buy a house or we buy a car or buy anything else. No matter what choice or what decision we have to make, that process is still the same. We say yes to what? One, and no to all the others. Is that being restrictive? Is that being narrow-minded? It's being absolutely sure is what it is. Amen. It's being absolutely sure and being sure-minded. The Bible warns us, about another way that seems right. Amen? Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Now, I want to make a point here. This verse is also repeated in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. Said this over and over. When God says something once, it's important, right? But if he repeats it, we better pay attention. Extra closely. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Plain and simple. And God repeats that in Proverbs 16, 25. Jesus tells us that this, what, is, what, what that verse is talking about, that there seems to be a way that is right to man, but in the end, where does it lead? To destruction. That's exactly what Jesus was saying here in verse 13 about the broad way. He said, enter by the narrow gate. That's a command. He's saying, look, this is where you need to enter. Why? Because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads where? To destruction. The same place. Because this way, this road, is the one that is socially accepted. This is the road, this is the way that is politically correct. The world will tell you, just be a good person on this road and, and you'll be just fine. That's all you have to worry about is just being a good person. But just like we read there in Proverbs 14, Jesus warns us. 
that this road leads to destruction. What is he talking about by destruction? He's talking about spiritual death. He's talking about spending an eternity in hell. Destruction, spiritual death. God is telling us, he's saying, look. He's saying, if there were any other way, Jesus would not have suffered the way he did on Calvary. Amen? God is telling us, pay attention. Here's truth. Jesus Christ, out of his unconditional love for us, he made a choice. Now, I want to make sure you understand that this was a very narrow choice. He said yes to taking on humanity and leaving his glory behind. He said yes to taking upon himself all of my sins and all of your sins, the just for the unjust. He said yes to the beatings, the mockings, the torment, the pain, the suffering that he endured, the crucifixion, and ultimately death upon that cross. He said yes to that narrow way that led him down one path, and that was the path that took him up Golgotha's hill to Calvary's cross. That was a very narrow way, wasn't it? In doing so, <clears throat> he said no to Satan. When Satan offered him a crown without going through the cross, Satan took him up on that pinnacle and he said, look at all the world. He said, I'll give it all to you. He offered Christ the crown without having to go to the cross, but Jesus said, no, thank you. Jesus said no to all the other ways. Why? Because there was only one way, one choice for our salvation, one choice for our redemption. And Jesus knew that choice was Calvary. Plain and simple. Now, I want to close today's message with just a final thought. We're going to have part two to this message next week. But I want to close with the fact that we all must make a choice. Amen? We have the choice of the difficult way, that difficult road, through that straight and narrow gate and that straight and narrow gate is through Jesus Christ himself. Plain and simple. Jesus and Jesus alone, he is the gate. He is the door. Now, there's no doubt he told us, he warned us. He said it's a tough road. It's a very restrictive road. It's not politically correct. It's not accommodating and accepting. It's narrow-minded. It's unaccommodating. Why? Because it only contains truth and righteousness along this road. Amen? But it's the only way. It's the only road that leads to life. Eternal and spiritual life. And then Jesus adds that sad truth at the end. He said, there's only a few that go in there. And then he gives us that second choice. He said, there is a broad way. And you can simply go in through that wide gate. Easy to enter. It's the easy road. It's very wide and it's very accommodating to all. It's socially accepting. It's politically correct. It's accepting of any belief, any lifestyle, regardless of the morality. 
It's the path of least resistance. It's the popular way to go. It's the way that seems right to mankind. But he said, don't be deceived. Because that way, that road is the road that leads to destruction. That is the road that leads to spiritual death and an eternity in hellfire. The Bible gives us another sad truth. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 14. Listen to what the Bible tells us. Therefore, Sheol, or hell, therefore hell has enlarged itself and opened its mouth beyond measure. Their glory and their multitude and their pomp shall descend into it. I want you to understand that Isaiah was given us a prophecy, a dark, dreary picture of the end times, that there's going to be so many on this broad way that leads to destruction that hell itself has to enlarge its mouth to accommodate all those that are on that path, that are going down that road. But Jesus, with all the love in his heart, he is pleading to us. He's telling us, enter please by the narrow gate. Come through me. Come through me. It's a tough road. You're going to get ridiculed. You're going to get mocked. It's not politically correct. It's not socially accepted. You're going to be in the great minority. But he said it's the only way that leads to life. We all have a choice to make. Which road are you on?